Hi, I hope you're doing great. In the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about Arduino shields. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some key points to keep in mind when you're assembling an Arduino shield from a kit. Even though I've tailored the video for Arduino shields, most of these tips are going to be just as helpful for any electronics kit you might be assembling. So you just bought an awesome Arduino shield. You know, it's going to like fly you to the moon and back. But before you start using it, you might have to do some basic soldering to assemble it. You know, because a lot of these Arduino shields, they get sold as kits. So what we're going to do is outline some things to keep in mind when putting together your Arduino shield from a kit form. Or really, for that matter, just to let any electronics kit you have, the, all these tips should really help. Okay, so the first advice is painfully obvious, but it is still worth mentioning. Read the stinking directions. So I know when all you have to do is solder on some header pins and a couple LEDs, it's tempting to ignore the need for directions and just go at it. I mean, you're a genius, right? Who really needs directions? You know, as uh, Jared Tolkien says, shortcuts make for long delays. So even on simple assemblies, it truly pays to take the time to read through the directions. Nowadays, most companies put their directions online instead of just including them in the box. So I'm telling you, it's definitely worth it. It will save you time in the long run. Not everybody has enough room to make a dedicated space for their electronics addiction. I know for a long time, my kitchen table was kind of my, the, my point of assembly. So if you don't have a dedicated space, a couple things you'll want to consider are at least having a good lighting source so that you can see what you're up to. You're going to want access to a wall outlet so you can plug in your soldering iron and preferably you won't be working on top of a shag carpet as they tend to be repositories for small electronics parts. Now good instruction manuals will let you know what tools you need for the job but generally speaking the essential tools are going to be a soldering iron, some solder, and wire cutters. Some of the other tools that aren't necessary but make life way, easy, way easier are a good set of needle nose pliers for grabbing tiny parts, a helping hand or a handy helper as my daughter calls them. These help not only to hold parts when you're soldering, but they also provide the magnifying glass which is good for checking the solder joints. Some solder wick for undoing your mistakes, and of course a pair of safety glasses. Now you might be thinking, ah heck with the safety glasses. You know, it's easy to kind of write them off when you're assembling tiny projects like these. But uh, it's still not a really bad idea to throw them on, especially when you start clipping those wires. Um, what I find, if you get a, you know, if you spend a little money and get a pair that's comfortable and you keep them clean, it makes it far less of a hassle to wear them. For whatever reason, inventorying all the parts in a kit always seemed like a waste of time to me. But now it's something that I always make sure I do. And there's two big reasons for this. First is many of the boards that I get are from Kickstarter campaigns. And so the people manufacturing them, they might be kind of new to the whole gig. And you know, I know people who run these Kickstarters, they have a whole lot of stuff going on. So it wouldn't be that far out of reality or out of possibility for them to miss a part in the package. So I think that's a really good reason to kind of check the components. Another reason I like to do the inventory is so that I know if I already, if I start with extras. So if you finish putting something together and you have pieces left over, I always kind of have that part of me wondering, hey, did I actually assemble this thing correct or not? If you do that inventory at the beginning, then you can be confident, confident that you assembled it correctly in the first place. The other thing I do after the inventory is I like to separate like components into different bowls or jars. And this is really helpful for me in a couple ways. First, it helps me easily find which piece I'm looking for. So it, it increases my efficiency, speeds things up a little bit. And the other part is, you know, these little tiny electronic parts, they're so easy to lose. And so when you have them in jars or bowls or whatever, it makes keeping tabs on them a whole lot easier, especially if you have to stop and start up again for some reason. Now, I like solder wick as much as the next guy, but I'd really prefer not to have to use it. It is so worth your time to double check part locations before you start soldering. Now I learned my lesson when I soldered a 24 pin connector on the wrong side of a board. Now I almost always check a diagram or the directions at least twice before pulling out the solder. After I solder, I also make a point to look over the solder joints. I am always amazed at how much my soldering joints kind of suck even when I feel like I did a great job. And again, this is where having that helping hand or some type of magnifying glass really comes in handy. One thing all Arduino shields have in common are pin headers. 
You know, these are the metal row of pins that go on the bottom of the shield, and they're what plug into the Arduino stackable headers. So if you don't get these aligned correctly, then your, your shield may not fit well on top of the Arduino. In fact, it might not even be able to fit at all if you get, if you get the alignment that much off. So one trick to get the alignment right is to use an Arduino to hold the pin headers in the correct position when you solder them to the bottom of the shield. So basically, all you do is you insert the header pins like they'd go into the Arduino, and then you place the shield on top of it. What this does is set up a perfect bed for soldering. It really works like a charm. All right, so you got your shield fully assembled, you throw it on your Arduino, you load up a sketch, and uh, you get the error roll. I know how demoralizing that can be. Well, here's really a couple thoughts on this when it comes to troubleshooting an Arduino shield. First off, if it's an established shield, you know, if it's been around for a while, chances are it might be a software issue. And that's why you should really use any sketch or code that comes with the board in, you know, in the first place. If it comes with an example sketch, use, those, use that example sketch to try to verify that, that you've got the code working correctly. If you think it's a hardware issue, you want to start with the easiest to fix hardware issues first. So that would be, you know, checking your solder joints, making sure that you actually have a a good connection at each joint. You know, check your components, make sure you didn't accidentally maybe turn around a diode or, or something like that. But you know, here's kind of a tidbit of moral support. There really are learning curves to everything. It doesn't matter how easy they are, uh, you know, how easy they are to use or how easy they might have been advertised to use. In fact, some of my very favorite shields took me a while to understand how to use. So Try not to get frustrated if your sketch isn't working instantly. In the end, I really think a bit of determination goes a long way. So let's do a quick review of what we talked about. First, read the directions. An obvious thing? Yes, still worthwhile. Consider where you're going to be building the board. You want to make sure you're going to have good lighting, access to a power outlet, and preferably not on shag carpet. Get all your tools together. Again, soldering iron, solder, wire clippers, really the essential tools there. Inventory all your parts. Feels like a waste of time, it's really not. Check twice, solder once. It's gonna save you time in the long run. You can use an Arduino board to help align the pin headers on the shield. And when it comes to troubleshooting the shield, the code is a good place to start. Well, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you like this style of tutorial, I actually offer a free 12-part course over at the Open Source Hardware Group website that you can check out. And, you know, if you're an electronic hobbyist or somebody interested in learning about Arduino and you're looking for some type of structured curriculum, I also offer a paid course over at the Open Source Hardware Group website that you can also check out. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about using a single input to trigger two separate Arduinos uh, at the same time. All right. Hey, I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks again a ton for watching the show. And until uh, next time.